Yeah. And if sometimes shot, hold it. Okay. If they succeed in shooting down, it's shot down. If they do not succeed in shooting down, it's not shot down. And then what happens? It's not that when A goes after B and that's it. No, after A finishes his B, and even if he shoots down B, B doesn't let A off the hook, then B attacks A the same way. Where the heck do you think you come from? Where do you get yours from? That's exactly what the whole Gemara is all about. To substantiate and prove with logical, self-evident arguments according to the rules of that we have in terms of tradition of, of a legitimate argument, of a legitimate conclusion. So there's no way in the world it's hijacked. Hijack you can have when I lay down the law and I say, this is what it is. Shut up, don't ask questions. Who said they were there to argue back? Who said they were able to counteract? Maybe they were, maybe they were excommunicated already. They, they were, they gave, the Ravana made the argument for them. How do you know the other sects? They, they How do you know the other sects? How do you know the other sects? How do we know? Yes. From historians. Which historians? Which historians? Which historians? Like who? Like, um, what's There's the only Josephus. one. That's the only one. So, and Josephus that you may have today is going to com- uh, complete the court. Okay? It's a co- complete the corrupted text. That's number one. Number two. Josephus doesn't know, he just says that there were these sects, and he tells you the same as the Gemara says, exactly the same, what these sects stood for, what they believed in. So therefore, once you have that, and why they did so, then you have a simpler, when it comes to halacha the the, the, the the decision, it's not a question of hijacking, it's a question of proving, disproving. Simple as that. But they were the main frame, it's like proving... It's, I understand what you're saying. I, I totally but, but I don't understand what you're saying. No, I understand it's not hij- no, I'll tell you, I, I understand what you're saying. It's not hijacking because they were able to give the people free will to argue and then they disproved the argument. What free? They're not people that didn't even deal with the people. That was a totally internal argument. Totally what internal, internal argument. What do you mean internal? The argument was not in front of a whole audience. It was a, it was a debate. Exactly. It was and not no, a debate. No one knew about it. The, the public didn't know about but it. But we know about it. Because, because the leaders told us about it. Not because, because we were aware of it. Because we saw that the other people did see that the other people that do this and do that. Yeah. So between themselves, they argued it out. How could you say this? How could you say that? But this contradicts this and that contradicts that. But this is inconsistent with this and that is inconsistent with that. Okay. Finish. Case closed. The same, the same as you do in a court of law. In a court of law, you sing in a Supreme Court, all the judges think right. the same way. No. So this judge will have his opinion, this judge will have his opinion. So there, each one, if you cannot they will try to convince one another, that's exactly what happened with the Sanhedrin, that's exactly what happened between the Rabbonan. Right. They try to convince one another, they try to refute one another. Yes. If they can, each, each one proves he has a totally 100% consistent system that you can't shoot a hole in it. Then comes the Torah and tells you how to rule in such a case. Ache Rabn Hattas. Ache Rabn Hattas, to follow the majority, is not a democratic rule. Has nothing to do with democracy. Right. Has nothing at all to do even with some kind of a resolution of a problem. That itself becomes a <coughs> divinely revealed Torah law. That God says, when you have all these opinions, of who? The opinions of the authorities in the field. The opinions of all those who are fully aware of everything that is involved in these matters. The opinions of where they understand clearly what the other side is saying, etc., etc. Uh, so when you have only these authorities can make this vote, and they come to a conflict, where they cannot shoot down one another, that's the only way. When they, when they can't shoot down, argument is over. When they cannot shoot down the argument that each one is consistent, now says the Torah, halacha the common will be one halacha. There will be one halacha. Not such, such as that. There's only one halacha even if, and that God says is laugh for Shemaini. There's the famous story in the Gemara about Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yeshua about a certain oven, whether it's Torah or Tomei. And Rabbi Yezer said, it is uh, Torah. Rabbi Yeshua, uh, the Rabbonin, the Paschal, it is Tomei. And Rabbi Yezer said, you guys don't know what you're talking about. And so they said, look, we are the majority. He says, majority, majority. I don't give a hoot. Right. If I'm right, uh, let the palm tree outside the Vesemedash fly up in the air. Palm tree flies up in the air. And Rabbi Yeshua says, big deal. I'm not impressed. Let the walls of the, the base of Medashir cave in. Come on, Bob Mitzia, non test. Let the walls of the base of And the walls started caving in. Now, the, the, the Rabbonne would have been killed by that. So Rabbi Yeshua gave out one yell. You walls, mind your own business. Stay out of our argument. <coughs> and the walls stayed, stopped falling in. And they stayed crooked. So they had the memory there from what happened. 
Then Rabbi Yezer said, if I am right, let God testify who is right. And a Baskel comes from heaven and says, Rabbi Yezer is right and you're wrong. I'll be sure shrugs his shoulders. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed even by God himself. Why? Laugh Pashemaimi. Because you, God, laid down a law, a rule in the Torah. That the Torah is not in heaven. That the Sanhedrin has to rule according to the guidelines that you passed on through Moshe about the legitimate interpretation of the Torah. So therefore, even in heaven they cannot change that. Because this was handed over to the Sanhedrin. Now, which means, this, this odd interpretation of Torah is not an arbitrary uh, thing. It, it has very strict rules which were given by God. The Gemara continues there that he uh, was at Abnosen, met Elio Novi uh, some time later, and he asked him, what did God do when this argument happened? And in the best message, the Paskin against God himself, as it were. He says, God laughed. He says, Nitzchuni, Bonai Nitzchuni. My children, uh, they, ov- they overcame me. They overcame me because I gave them this rule and they, they got me with my own rule that I gave them. So, now, what, what, Rabbi, what Rabbi Yezus said is also true. It has truth in it. But it's not the way we have to rule here on earth by the rules of God laid down. Beshama Beshila, it says, when Mashiach will come, we'll pass like Beshama. Which means there is truth in Beshama. But in our present state, according to the rules laid down for establishing halacha, Beshama is ruled out, and Beshama, for all practical purposes, does not exist. It's out of the picture. Mashiach will come, different, uh, different ball game. So here likewise. These other positions, there we are talking about completely heretical positions that they had adopted. Right. And they were shown uh, why, how they were wrong. For that matter, they also believed in a certain Torah pay. Take, for example, the Karaites. The Karaites claim to, similar to the Sadducees, that they only believe in Torah itself. They don't realize how they contradict themselves. Because there's not one posit, there's not one mitzvah in Torah itself that makes any sense without Torah pay. I think I gave you examples last time, I think. Circumcision. You know what circumcision is? Snap, snap. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Snap, snap what? <laughs> hmm? Snap, snap what? I'm asking a serious question. Right. Oh, huh? I didn't tell you. They're, they're putting it on. It's a pet. No, it's actually Yeah, it's foreskin. We wouldn't know it unless we had to stop it. Yeah. Exactly. Foreskin. Foreskin of what? Yeah. Where does the Torah mention a penis? I mean, yeah. where would you assume for that matter it's not even a, a word it's not even a word in the Torah for penis where do you get to do that f- f- uh, circumcision means from the penis well, where do you think the force Circum- is foreskin of your nose <laughs> <laughs> your earlobe off your ear yeah yeah but it talks about how Abram was in pain I mean they, yeah what so you, if I cut your <laughs> earlobe you won't be in pain <laughs> they didn't give no reference that it was no not one single reference absolutely nothing Tradition? It's just tradition. Yeah, There's only one il- allusion, a far-fetched allusion, one. called Zoho, every male should be circumcised. So since it says every male, so there's obviously something where the male is distinguished from the female. So that's the allusion. But, but, but that doesn't say it either. So if I wouldn't uh, know about this interpretation, there's no way I would know. So without God telling him explicitly what I mean, you know, that thing down there, there, snip, snip, how would everyone know what circumcision? How would any later generation know what circumcision? So how did Shabbos. Oh. What is work on Shabbos? Don't do any work on Shabbos. The only work that's mentioned in the, the, the Torah is the last week's Pasha is not to make a fire on Shabbos. That's what the carrots sit in the dark. Shabbos. Huh? Huh? What does that mean? Is that the Smeloche? So that's the devil stay, staying at home. It's not the work. We're talking about labors. Lama test Meloches. So where do we get it from? Tradition? Again, tradition. Uh, Tfilin. Right. Karen. Right. Karen. Right. It says it. That's a melacha. It says it's a melacha. It says don't make a fire. On Shabbos. Don't make a fire on Shabbos. Which means it's forbidden. So that's a melacha. That's forbidden on Shabbos. Huh? What does the say? What does that mean? I don't know. It okay. Like At the end of the day. So, uh, uh, Tfilin. Where do you find the term of Tfilin now? In between the eyes, you have carrots. A sign, tie for a sign upon your hand, and tie the first between your eyes. Tie what? Tie how? Tie with what? So what I don't know what you're talking about. So I. Right? No, they, they do it that way. So where do you get it from? Yeah, but 
Oh, that simple question. Where, where do we get it from? from? Huh? Where do we get it from? From Torah Shabbat Peh. So doesn't that make Torah Shabbat Peh? From Torah Shabbat Peh, simple as so that. Maybe they have their own oral tradition, I don't know. Huh? They deny such a thing. They say there's only Torah Shabbat Peh. But that's like way off, but at the same there's time... There's only Torah Shabbat Peh, which means there's a contradiction terms. Which means technically they could not fulfill any of these things. And yet they observe these things as well. Maybe it's a tradition from Sinai that they put the film. Of course, it's a tradition from Sinai. But that's an old tradition, not a written tradition. Obviously, right from the beginning, they must have put on film in their circumcision. But that's not not recorded anywhere. That's my point. So therefore, it's an absurdity in the very argument. And therefore, likewise, it's a definite you, ca- you cannot come and say, well, yes, this is an old tradition, but there is no old tradition. Get, get, make up your mind. If there is an old tradition, then there is an old tradition, period. <coughs> Never mind what the Torah says, uh, that you shall check the animals as kasher to the zero, as I have commanded you. Check the whole Torah, you will not find anywhere how God that Jews are commanded to share. So there you have an explicit reference in the Torah itself that it was an old tradition. Explicitly stated it, kasher tzvisicho, but it is not stated anywhere in the Chumash. And so likewise in other things. So therefore when you the, come at Tzedoki and you can come, if they come and deny something like the afterlife, you know, Tzedoki can deny, there is no such thing as afterlife, and you know, that because in the Torah there is no reference, in, for that matter, even in Tanakh, there is no explicit reference to any afterlife, either heaven or hell, all you have is gathered into his fathers, all you have is comes from the abyss into the depths, etc., etc., which can be interpreted uh, X numbers of ways. So they deny that there's, there's no Svavoinish. This is it. Uh, Svavoinish is all in this world. Fact, so it, this is, <coughs> in principle, it does not affect my, my day-to-day life. <coughs> it does affect one of the Ikori Emunah. But it's not something which is stated explicitly. So therefore, it's a document I can understand where they're coming from. Um, so, so, so that... I can more or less somehow live with it. So that's the the, the Chachasal didn't even bother to 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 oh, argue. Forget to, about those to, people. To, huh? No, 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 no. They did not forget about this. No, I know you can't forget, but I'm just saying it's not, those people to me, it, not rationally, they sound very extreme. Yeah, but, but then, but, very extreme, but, but then, but, but then, but then they come also and they say, yeah. for example, with regards to Mochas uh, Shabbos, with regards to the Oima, that the Oima is always brought on a Sunday, because it says Mochas Shabbos. Which means Shavuos always has to be on a Sunday. Um, but we interpret Mimochas the Shabbos <coughs> is, means Yontif is also called Shabbos, as we find in the Chumash itself. So whenever Pesach is, Mimochas the Shabbos means on the morning after the day of Yontif, that is Shabbos, the day of desisting from work. They took the word Shabbos in the literal sense. No, it means Shabbos Breshis. Shabbos Breshis means the Shabbos, the seventh day of the week. So Mimochas the Shabbos would always have to mean it is a Sunday. So there we have a detailed halachic debate between them, where they showed how they are wrong and how it cannot be their interpretation. And so there are many others. So that's where they uh, would get into this confrontation. So it was. So the idea of hijack the religion and uh, this and that. I don't mean it. I don't mean, I don't mean it like that. Or, 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 or even enforced it. it, it <coughs> everything is precisely because of what they called him argued, push him argued. Lach b'shemayim. Lach b'shemayim. He means with regards to God and with regards to ourselves that nobody can come and simply impose and nobody, a prophet cannot come and suddenly say it should be done this way he can bring all the, all the miracles in the world if he tries to change one iota of the accepted tradition as you know it he's out he's out so therefore nobody can change it's La Pashmani the Torah we have these specific rules so therefore that's precisely that prevents any potential hijacking because the onus is always on the one who wants to be mechadish something now you show me where you get it from and you show how not just where you get it from but also show me how anything because every law in any legal system is not just a law every law has legal principles and ideas behind it and these legal principles and ideas behind it affect every other law. Because it's a system. So there are certain premises and certain principles. And that's how we rule, even in secular law. You go to a court today, everything has to be based on the Constitution. The Constitution was written there over 200 years ago. How can the Constitution of 200 years ago deal with a situation, modern situation of today? Because the Constitution is the amendments, etc., etc., they have underlying legal moral principles. And on the basis thereof are made the later laws, which have to conform to all these. 
And therefore you can sometimes appeal a sentence by saying they have 